Okay, we are live. It looks like I might be one minute early, so I'm going to give people time to get into the stream. Super excited to be here. Uh, welcome everybody who's already joined us, and obviously we want to get as many people in here as possible because we got something really important to talk about today. Today, we're going to talk about writing an absolute bulletproof business plan to be able to go ahead and get approved for an SBA loan. Now, if you're someone who's looking for financing and you're looking to make sure you're guaranteed to get financing, uh, then you really need to build your business credit. And I got my man, Alfredo, working today, throwing up some links for us, answering some questions in the chat. Uh, he's going to go ahead and throw up a link to get more information on our business credit builder. Uh, we're super excited to talk to you. As a matter of fact, if you're not ready to purchase that right now, we'd love to give you a real a special assessment. I think our link is creditsuite.com forward slash consult. That's creditsuite.com forward slash consult. If you're looking to find out where you stand in the big picture of funding, look, that's what we do, ladies and gentlemen. We're absolute experts at this. Uh, those of you who have been following Ty for a, a while know that just he has so much information that he wants to share. And I'm really fortunate that he's allowed me to be here today. Those of you who do know me, I feel like uh, Mr. Cotter on Welcome Back Cotter. Right? I've been gone for a while and I'm back. Better than never, got a better haircut. Uh, and today we're going to lay some real info on you, okay? So we're talking about writing a bulletproof business plan for an SBA loan. So the first question, what is a business plan, right? Sounds like it's simple, but if you ever sat down to try and write one, it can get really, really confusing. What a business plan is, a, a well-structured business plan can act a lot like a roadmap, right? No different than taking a trip from here to wherever, uh, you want to lay out your plan, right? If you've got a three-day trip, you want to make sure you're not just, just willy-nilly guessing where you're going. You know where you're going, but it's better to have a roadmap, right? The main purpose is to help investors, stakeholders, even your staff understand the business's overall concept, its goals, its financial projections. In other words, when you talk about your business, you want to have it laid out in a manner that it's easy to understand for, again, investors, financers, loan officers, right? That's why it's important. That's what matters. It, why it matters, any company having a business plan is a crucial step to help navigate and plan success easier, right? It's no different than anything else. If you're planning a weekend, and you notice I use the word planning, uh, a weekend in the Keys, you don't want to just show up willy-nilly, right? You want to have a plan. You want to go see the, you know, the southernmost point. You want to hit certain beaches, maybe certain restaurants that you've heard about. You want to have a plan. You want to lay that out. Right. Well, if you're willing to do that for a weekend trip to the Keys, you definitely need to be doing it to start your business, right? To get your business rolling, right? So it helps you navigate and plan success easier. But this is especially, especially important when attempting to secure funding, right? This is one of the weakest links that we see here at Credit Suite when we're helping people to get funding, right? By the way, I'm going to do my best to answer your questions in the stream. If I miss them, I apologize, but I promise you, my man, Alfredo, is going to jump in on you and answer your questions as quickly as possible if I don't get them, okay? It's not because I don't want to answer your questions, but just I'm not wearing my trifocals today. I may miss them. <laughs> so anyway, uh, for any company having a business plan, it's a crucial step to help navigate and plan success easier. Like I said, especially when we talk about securing funding. It clearly highlights your plans to generate revenue. Big, big deal, right? A detailed overview of how the business is, is run, how you plan on navigating certain challenges that may come up, and where you believe future opportunities will appear, right? So you're basically laying out your vision to a lender, right? Having this properly prepared when applying for an SBA loan will instantly start your funding journey off on the right foot. It demonstrates to lenders that your business is gonna be viable and it has a solid plan for success. Now, in addition to that, we all know you need to have a really strong business credit profile as well. And once again, that's why we're gonna talk about going to creditsuite.com forward slash consult Talk to one of my team members. Let's take a look at where you are today uh, and let's get you heading in the right direction. That's creditsuite.com forward slash consult. It'll get you an appointment with one of my top people. And I promise you, they forgotten more than most people know about business credit. Right. So how do you write this bulletproof business plan for an SBA loan? Loan. Let's walk through the finer details on what to include in your business plan. Get ready to start taking some notes here. All right. So first of all, you want to start off with the, with the layout, right? You want to have a cohesive layout. 
That's going to begin with your executive summary. This is going to be a snapshot of your business that can be used to capture the lender's attention, right? Almost like writing a resume for your business. You need to include a concise overview of your business, including its mission, products, services, target market, competitive advantages, and funding requirements. Uh, I, When I would write my business plans, I like to include who my competitors were, right? I never liked to hide that information. I wanted my funding sources to understand who my competitors were and why I was better, right? So that's your executive summary, right? You want to have a company description. Here's where you can provide detailed information about your business, history, location, any unique product or services that sets you apart from your competition. Once again, we're talking about competition. This third one is really, really key. This is your market analysis, right? This is a clear understanding of your industry, your target market, and your competitors, right? You want to include market trends in that. You want to include demographics, general market research to help show your business strengths more. In other words, you want to put a shine on your business strengths. So when you do the market analysis, obviously you want to show, hey, there's this need in this segment of this market, and this is why we fill it so nicely. Okay. That's your market analysis. We want to show your organization. We want to show management. This is the section is to build confidence in your ability to manage a business effectively. You want to outline your business's organizational structure, key members, and their very specific roles and, irrelevant, and any relevant experience that comes with it, right? If you don't have a team built out yet, that's okay, right? Just focus on your particular relevant experience and even briefly mention your near future plans on building a team to help support your business needs. So if your business plan involves building a, a five to 10 person sales team, you want to include that in that part of the outline, right? But you may not have to have those five or 10 people now, but that's something you want to talk about. Does that make sense? Everybody good here? Perfect. All right. So the next section, you're going to talk about your products and services. You want to describe what you offer in detail, not just we make widgets, right? You want to talk about how that widget is positioned in the current market, right? You want to highlight the benefits of your product and service, that it, how it, what it provides to the customers, explain how you're going to meet your customers' needs and stand out in the market. You don't just want to put, hey, I make t-shirts, right? Well, there's a lot of people who make t-shirts. You want to why your t-shirts are better positioned to sell in the current market, right? It might be a great saying that you trademarked. It might be uh, the the number of uh, threads per count for, for you know, the cotton. Uh, whatever your strategic advantage is, and it might just be a marketing advantage, uh, you want to lay that out at this section, right, with your products and services, right? Then you want to talk about marketing and sales strategies. You want to outline your marketing and sales plans, this is part is crucial since both departments are massive, massive driving factors behind cash flow in most cases. I mean, one of the things I talk about with Credit Suite is what I love about this company is it has an amazing marketing team and an amazing sales team. We love what we sell. We love helping business owners like yourselves. We love to show you how to build your business credit profile. But I honestly believe that if you unplug business credit from Credit Suite and plugged in anything, with between Ty, our marketing team, and our sales team, and obviously Megan running everything in the background, uh, we could sell anything. We could sell speakers. We could sell the microphone that I'm speaking into right now. So marketing and sales strategies is crucial, crucial. And it's really what's going to put you, give you a leg up on your competitors. All right. Describe how you're going to attract and retain your customers, what your pricing strategies are going to be, your distribution channels, your promotional activities, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Big, big, big deal when laying out your business plan. The next part, which is what we're all here for, is your funding request. Yes, your funding request goes into your business plan, right? All businesses need funding. All businesses need funding. Every business you meet needs funding. If any of you are out there and say, I never need any funding, you have an unbelievable business. It's probably a monopoly, okay? All businesses need funding. So in your business plan, you want to put what your funding request is, what your funding goals are, right? You want to clearly state the amount of funding you're requesting and how you intend to use it, right? Break down the allocation of funds, not just, and I hear this all the time, uh, hey, I need funding. Well, how much do you need? Well, I don't know, as much as I can get. That's not going to fly when you're going for an SBA loan. You need to clearly define what you need those funds for, and it can't be just growth, right? Easy to say, I want to grow my business. Give me a million dollars. You want to have an allocation of funds, such as equipment purchases, marketing, 
working ca working capital, you know, whatever it is you specifically need it for, you need to have that in your business plan. Okay. Don't just willy nilly pick a number. The irony of it is when most people do that, I find they underestimate what they need. Remember, they almost always underestimate what they need. Uh, they think they need a hundred grand. And when I look at them, I'm, I'm seeing 250, 300, right? But they're just looking to get what they can. Don't make that mistake. When you're laying out your business plan, lay out exactly what you need for funding. And if you're unsure if you've got the right number, overestimate. I mean, dig in. When you're talking about equipment, that's pretty easy. You can shop it. I would get three quotes for your equipment. Whatever the highest one is, that's what you want to put in there, right? You can always shop it later and 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 get a lower price. But when you're thinking about your marketing, hey, I think I'm going to need to spend ten grand a month. Well, talk to whatever channels you're going to be spending that marketing money in, and find out if that's feasible, right? There's nothing worse than getting approved for a loan and find out it's not enough, right? That's the absolute worst thing that can happen because now you got to go back hat in hand and say I, I screwed up. I need more, right? So now, ironically, if you build your business credit profile, when things like that happen, you should have enough other additional credit that'll help you get through those tough times, right? If you're not sure about that, go to creditsuite.com forward slash consult, schedule an appointment with one of my team. We'll show you exactly what we're talking about, okay? All right, next section in the Bulletproof Business Plan is the financial projections. This is where it can get a little bit weird for people, all right? So a lender wants to have a peace of mind when deciding to give you the requested funding. Makes sense, right? You're not, you don't have any history to show them. The business plan is basically your history, what you're showing them. Uh, you need to provide detailed financial projections for the next three to five years, including income statements, balance sheets, and cash flow statements. In other words, they want to see that you did your due diligence, you know what you're going to be spending the money on, and you know the type of return on your investment you're expecting to get. Now, they're not looking for if you're off by a dollar, it's going to be a problem. They just want a good idea. Remember, they have to justify this loan above themselves, right? So you have an, a, a loan officer who's looking at this. It's going to an underwriter. If the underwriter approves it, that has to be justified to someone above them as well, right? So you've got to do what's in their best interest, which is laying out your business plan so it makes it easy for them to approve the funding and they can justify it simply by looking at your financial projections as one of the items, right? So use realistic assumptions based off your market research and historical data. And that's where I was going to go with this. If you're unsure, look at what your market research is the key. If I was going to start a t-shirt company or matter of fact, better yet, something I'm really good at, um, real estate sales company. If I want to start a, a, a real estate agency, I would go into the MLS, figure out the number of sales that happened in the last 12 to 24 months. I would look at where the market was trending, what I expect the market to do, how many agents I can expect to hire or recruit, um, what type of return on my marketing I expect if I do X type of marketing, whether it's door hangers, mailers, you know, Google, Facebook ads, whatever that is, and then look at the type of commission I could earn based on the average sale in the local market, right? You see what I'm saying? So your market research should guide you towards some assumptions that actually make good sense when we talk about financial projections. Does that make sense to everybody? I hope it does. Anybody have any questions about that? Put it in the chat. I'm happy to answer. Okay. So use realistic assumptions based off your market research and historical data. Sorry about the dog. <laughs> Somebody must be at my door. Um, and then you have the appendix. The appendix is where you want to finally wrap up your business plan with any supplementary information that can support basically everything mentioned above, such as your market research reports. Like I mentioned, I'd pull the MLS data to show X number of homes with an average sale price of X happened in the market that I'm in. I would want to look at industry analysis. Is the market trending down? Is it trending up? Resumes of key members, including yourself. Right. Any relevant legal documents, including any contracts, future contracts, uh, you know, the business registration information, uh, any relevant business licenses, et cetera. So this is where, just like at the end of any book, you're going to see where did this data come from? So just because you tell them, hey, the market is going up, right? They don't, they're don't. they not going to believe you just because they, they want to see it, prove to them. Remember, they've got to sell this above them as well, right? So any relevant information that goes into your business plan, you want to include that in the business plan, right? That's called the appendix, all right? So some things you want to keep in mind. This is really important. You want to be clear and concise. You don't want to talk like I do, right? I can run on and on and on. I could spend three hours talking about the same thing, but I could probably could get 
across clearly in about two minutes. So you want to be clear and concise. You want to absolutely showcase your expertise. Right? There's a reason you got into this business because you feel that you could offer a customer something that somebody else wasn't. Right, So you want to showcase that expertise. This is why I'm going to do well in the real estate market because I was the number one agent for the real estate company I worked for. Right, I was number one in the country. So to me, that makes sense that if I open my own business, I, I potentially should be very successful. Right, And I'm showcasing that expertise by talking about my past history. Right. You want to absolutely proofread and edit this. Look, when you type up something like a business plan, you're going to change it six or seven times, right? When you're going through it, proofread it. Little secret, I used to own a printing company. Best way to proofread something, read it backwards. Read it backwards. You're going to find misspellings much faster. So if I wanted to proofread when in doubt, learn, you know, lean into professional resources, I'd read resources professional into lean, doubt in, when, and, right? So proofread it and edit it. You also want to be realistic. Look, we all, when we start our business, we all believe we're going to be the next Elon Musk or, you know, whoever, um, Jeff Bezos with Amazon. But we want to be realistic. We don't want to, don't want to talk about, you know, doing $100 million in sales our first year in business, unless you absolutely have a product that is just going to change the world. Um, but if you're getting into an industry, what I like to do is look at what does the average business in my industry do? Right. I built a company from zero to almost thirty five million dollars in the printing industry. But and that was a good sized company, um, but it wasn't outlandish. I looked at the industry and said, OK, the average company is at about five million. When I got to level two, the average company is between twenty five and forty million. So I knew when I got to level two, I'd be roughly in those numbers, which is exactly where I ended up. Uh, when I got into real estate sales, I know the average real estate agent made X dollars per year. Um, I felt like I had the skill to be in the top 10% and I was. Um, so I approached getting into that business, having a certain income in mind coming in. I kind of knew it already based on, again, type of homes that were available, what the average sale price was, what the average commission was. It's pretty easy to do. So be realistic. All right. When in doubt, lean into professional resources like Credit Suite, right? unsure how to set yourself up for funding, reach into Credit Suite, reach out to Credit Suite. This is what we're doing. We're experts at this. I'm here because I know how hard it is to get funding, to set yourself up for funding the right way. There's nobody in the country that does what we do. There's no one. There are people who pretend to do what we do, but there's no one who really does it the way we do. Nobody has the research team like we have. Um, it, it's just, it's a game changer. I mean, and I know right now people are like, well, I can find information online. You can, it's probably outdated. And you're going to waste a lot of time. And I don't know about you, but my time is extremely valuable. And that's and I know your time is as well, which is why I'm so thankful you're here with me today, right? Your time is extremely valuable. Wouldn't it be great to take something that could take years and compress that into months? Go to creditsuite.com forward slash consult. Set up a consultation with my team members. Let them talk to you about how you can build your business credit profile. Talk to you about your business plan. Set you up to get that SBA funding in the future. I mean, it's a game changer. It really, really is. Uh, both businesses that I started, one I got an SBA, one I didn't. Let me tell you how much easier it was getting that SBA loan uh, and getting that business to grow, right? I, did, I didn't really want another loan in my second business, and it was much more difficult, much more difficult, way longer of a time. Uh, and, and besides that, they have the best rates. So set yourself up right Write a bulletproof business plan for an SBA loan. Reach out to Credit Suite. Uh, I think I think Alfredo's throwing some links up there. Go to creditsuite.com forward slash consult. Set yourself up to talk to one of our people. We'll show you exactly the other missing pieces that you're going to need to get approved for an SBA loan. Uh, we'll even go over your business plan with you. Right? Give us a shout. Uh, let's see. Creditsuite.com forward slash consult. Any questions I can answer right now? Yes, this is recorded. Dog lover, no worries. Okay, uh, dog lovers, thanks for that. Yeah, you heard the dog in the background. Uh, trucker owner. Is that Shannon? Yes, yeah, Shannon Thomas Trucking. Absolutely. Look, you've got to build your business. First of all, if you're a trucker and you don't have a business credit profile built up, you're crazy, right? You can expand. You could scale so much faster getting things like fleet credit cards, vehicle financing, 
you know, visas, master, you name it. Think about getting that type of credit without a personal guarantee, right? Scan that QR code and schedule your consult. This is something you need to be doing now. This is not, look, we, I talk to a lot of people and I've, I've talked to a lot of people over the last five years that tend to come to us at the end of the process as opposed to the beginning, right? So they come to us and go, hey, my business is a business. I've got revenue going on. I really want to get an SBA loan. How's your business credit profile? Oh, I don't have any. Well, wait a minute. Had you been building this entire time from the day you started your business to now, you'd already be ready. You'd be getting approved now, right? So come to us now, right now, right? Creditsuite.com forward slash consult, scan the QR code, whatever it is, get set up with an appointment. Talk to my people. We're going to show you the exact way I did it. And by the way, I did it kind of on my own. Took me five years and I had 30 years of manufacturing experience. So I understood business credit. When I saw what was going on here and how easy it was, I was furious with myself that I hadn't found Credit Suite, right? That's why I'm so happy to be here. And if your biz gross is $200,000 a year, that's outstanding. You're on your way. How's your business credit profile, right? Go to creditsuite.com forward slash consult. Reach out to my team. You may even get lucky and get me. Uh, if anybody has any additional questions, throw them out there right now because we're going to end this live stream. I took a lot of your valuable time. I really appreciate everybody being here, and we are looking forward to seeing you again next time. Have a great day. This is Steve Weibel, Credit Suite. Talk to you again.